Okay, we're finally ready. Um, hello, everyone. My name's Norm Green. I'm the head of engineering at uh, Gem Talk, and welcome to Toronto. It's uh, good to be back here. I lived in Toronto in the 90s. It's changed somewhat since I've been here. I don't remember as many cannabis shops, for one thing. Uh, a lot of construction, especially up on uh, Eglinton. It's all tore up there for the new subway they're putting in. Um, by the way, if you're going north tonight to the banquet, I believe that line one is closed as of St. Clair, so you can get there another way or do about a 30 minute walk from St. Clair Station up to Eglinton to where the banquet is. If it's nice, I'm gonna walk, so I guess suit yourself. A um, Little bit of local insider information. What does TTT, TTC stand for? If you live here a while, it stands for take the car. <laughs> Case in point, uh, the closure this weekend. <laughs> and of course, I have to mention the Leafs. What's the difference between the Leafs and a mosquito? <laughs> Last Stanley Cup, 1967. Not that anyone's counting. Okay, the first part of my talk is just about uh, Gem Talk, the company, where we are, um, who we are. We've been around now for 40 years, doesn't seem possible, but 1982 is when Serviologic started. First version of Gemstone shipped in 86. Um, in 95, we changed our name from Servio to Gemstone. We were acquired by a German company called Brocat in 2000. Um, right before the dot-com bust. There was a management buyout in 01, where management bought the company back, and then it was acquired by VMware in 2010. And in 2013, we were spun off and bought by our current owner, Dan Ware, who is the president and CEO of Gemtalk, and we've been Gemtalk ever since. Um, when we spun off, VMware would not release the copyright for the name of the company, but allowed us to keep the product name. So we went from Gemstone to Gem Talk, but we could still call it uh, Gemstone Software. Uh, we're still going despite COVID. We were pretty well set up like a lot of software companies. Um, you can imagine to endure COVID, the uh, work from home and Zoom thing was really not a big change for us in a lot of ways. Uh, we're 100% from home from the start of COVID until about May of this year, and we've started going back to the office about two days a week currently. And that'll come and go as conditions and uh, the health regulations in Oregon dictate. Um, we haven't lost anybody to COVID or anything else. We've had a few cases, but uh, largely isolated, so we've been pretty fortunate. Uh, this next part goes through our customers and who's using the software for what, a uh, high-level overview. Um, J.P. Morgan Chase is probably our largest customer in the world. Um, they're out of London, New York, and Singapore, and they do trading platforms on uh, Gemstone. UBS out of Zurich does uh, precious metal back office settlement trading with a system called DBO, which stands for Distributed Back Office. Um, the ICE is a company that out of Atlanta that bought the New York Stock Exchange a few years back. Uh, Momentum is in South Africa, Lifeware is in Zurich, and uh, Guava is in Perth, Australia. On the manufacturing side, we have uh, TI. It's been with us since 91, one of our very early adopters. Um, a company called Onto, which TI sold their works platform to, uh, to outsource it in the 90s. HTS Engineering, which uh, most people local here for, have heard of, have their system called Trax, and a company called HB Fuller in Minneapolis does uh, adhesives manufacturing. Utilities, uh, we are in Florida Power and Light. Um, they're trouble call systems, so when the hurricane comes and knocks the power lines down and there's a trouble call put in from a customer to track where to 
uh, send the crews. That goes into a gemstone system called TCMS2, Trouble Call Management System 2. Also an older system called Power Billing, which is used to compute the electric bills for their uh, very largest customers. In the telecom space, uh, we have a system called Condus, in, which is now owned by a company called Atos, formerly uh, Siemens. Siemens spun it off a few years back. Um, and that does um, telecom provisioning for various telcos all over the world. Um, telecom Argentina is one of the largest ones. They're next on the list. And SPL is a German company that does uh, telco workflow management in near Hamburg, I believe. In the government space, um, Canada Border Security uses Gemstone. Um, it's all classified. They won't tell us really for what. We know it's something to do with passport scanning and looking for smugglers and that type of thing, but that's kind of all we get to know. Um, similarly, in Norway, the Norway Norwegian Dictorate of Immigration is doing visa processing with Gemstone. And the company, a government entity actually called LEI in The Hague, um, tallies all the agricultural data for the Netherlands into a system uh, run by Gemstone. Uh, we have lots of partners. Um, these are uh, things like value added resellers and companies that work for us and uh, do consulting for us kind of all over the map. Uh, we're still active in the community, not as much since COVID, of course, like everyone else, but we're an um, industrial member of the Faro Consortium. Uh, we sponsor ESUG. We'll be going to uh, Serbia in August, so we'll, we'll see you there. Uh, when we've sponsored the uh, conference in Argentina several times, uh, FAST, and of course this conference, Camp Small Talk Supreme, so we try to show up and do our part whenever we can. Uh, we're also hiring. Um, our, one of our newest members is Kurt, who's sitting up in the back. Uh, joined us in 2019. And uh, Kurt is a young engineer that uh, kind of immediately grasped the power of small talk. And I think we've hooked him for life. So it's, it's nice to see that because we're not going to live forever. But uh, we sure hope small talk does. And I put this little blurb from Kurt's cover letter in here. Once he understood small talk in a few days, he fell in love and he's never looked back. So we need more of that. Right on. Our newest hire is Andres Valud, who some of you may know. Um, he's part time right now. He's starting next week, actually, while he does his PhD in math, um, something I could never do. So he's working for us in the summers, and then we're hoping once he finishes his PhD in a few years, we're going to hire him full time. He's at, uh, doing it at Oregon State University, which is uh, about an hour down the road from Portland. So he's starting with us um, this coming week, actually. And we're also hiring. Um, we. We really need people to do what I call advanced quality assurance, people that like to try to break software. Um, you know, what happens if I create a class name with a thousand characters? Does it work? Does it fail? That type, type of thing. Most of the basic tests, as you can imagine, being, having done this for so long are covered, but there's always corner cases, and there's always more corner cases. So. Uh, what we really like to find is people that uh, want to take the software and hammer on it and try to find places it doesn't work. Um, so if you know anybody or you're interested, send us your resume. Uh, second part now, going into the roadmap. Um, our current release is 364, which actually shipped a few days ago this week. Um, the new major version we're working on is 3.7. We're slating that for the end of this year. I'll talk about what features are in some of these coming up. We're also supporting still the 3.5 line, um, last release back in February, and 3.4 is coming to end of life, but uh, our last release was back in 2020. 
So constantly marching forward with bug fixes, new versions. Um, some of the new features that came out in 3.5 was something called solo execution. And what that means is you can bring up a small talk gemstone command line without a database running. Um, what it does is it basically does read-only access against the default database that comes installed with the product tree. So you can, you can use this for scripting. Um, there's an example here where we go out and uh, connect to uh, google.com and, and print the reply we get from making that connection. And this is, again, done without an active database, just a topaz. So to, to turn that on, there's a topaz command, the first line, there's set solo login on, and from there, it will operate in solo mode. And then with, from that, you can write shebang scripts that do things in uh, Smalltalk. So you can write your Unix scripts in uh, Smalltalk instead of uh, Bash or Perl or you know, whatever you would normally do it in. There's a new toolkit that's coming out, if it's not out yet, that Dale wrote um, called SuperDoIt, which is basically a collection of scripts around the, the uh, solo mode. Also in 3.5, we added some more um, security classes, um, abstractions, uh, public key, private key, and certificate, and certificate chain. Um, these are small talk objects that sit on top of OpenSSL and, and do all their uh, heavy lifting down in the SSL code. We have added the support for the latest crypto algorithms, uh, the SHA-3, HMAC, um, the cha cha crypto modes that uh, Google uses. And then we add something called digital envelopes, which is uh, an encrypted envelope that you can in encrypt a payload and give it to another gemstone system and decrypt it. Um, it's signed, it's, it's basically unforgeable. In 3.6, we added um, DARE, data at rest encryption, which essentially means the data on disk is encrypted, both in the gemstone database extents and the TRAN logs. Um, the backups could be encrypted before this release. It's kind of a separate thing. Um, but everything on disk is encrypted, um, and you need a private key to start the database. Once the database is started, you no longer need the private key until you start it again. To manage the encryption and decryption, we added functionality to our CopyDBF utility. So you basically pass in a, a certificate, and um, then you can encrypt a, an extent, and then once you pass in the private key, you can to start stone, you can start that up and it comes right up. Uh, we also added a restricted perform on server. Perform on server is a method that does a call out to the shell uh, to do something in gemstone. Um, it was not restricted before this version. So now you can have a list of whitelisted commands that you allow perform on server to do. So this kind of closes the security hole so you can't, you know, rm f star on things you shouldn't be doing. Um, some of our banking customers wanted this. So you can lock it down entirely so you can't do anything on perform on server or you can have a white list of allowed commands that, that are permitted. We added four uh, new immediate classes in 3.6, and, and immediates are classes where their value is encapsulated in the object ID, so they never occupy, occupy any space on disks. Small date, small date and time, small scale decimal, and small time. And these get used automatically unless you really try not to. We added some improvements to our hot standby failover support. The hot standby is where you're uh, actively piping updates from one live production database to a standby database. 
uh, at the commit level, so it's constantly being synced um, to um, handle a failover type strategy situation. So we made it easier to fail over and fail back um, when using a hot standby. Um, we can output GS list, which is, shows you all the uh, gemstone processes or uh, server processes running on a system as JSON. Now, some of our customers requested this. We added something um, supporting uh, distributed key stores in 3.6, and our first cut at this is in the AWS cloud. So there's the concept of a customer master key where the key to encrypted data can rely outside of the repository, in this case, out in the AWS cloud. So this allows a, a customer to control when and if their encrypted data inside Gemstone can be accessed because they have controls inside Amazon that can turn on and turn off and invalidate keys. Um, so we had one customer that wanted this for a banking customer and we went and uh, added this using the uh, AWS uh, toolkit, the SDK, um, to allow this to work. Uh, looking ahead to 3.7, um, we added support for monitoring by something called Prometheus. Uh, which you may have heard of. Gemstones had monitoring forever in our own closed kind of format. It's just a text file, but it's something called Stat Monitor, where it samples stats out to a file. Um, they call that now a time-based series or something like that, but it's, we didn't have a name for it when we did it, but it's the same thing. It's basically sampling at a known interval of all the data. And Prometheus will allow you to set up various statistics and graph them on a browser. And there's all kinds of plugins that uh, people can use for monitoring systems with Prometheus and Grafana and, and all these tools you can get. So we built something called StatProm, which is similar to StatMonitor that outputs the data to a uh, Prometheus uh, socket that gets scraped by Prometheus on a periodic basis. It's good for monitoring uh, things like database size and number of objects and things like that that administrators care about. Um, in 3.7, we also want to add support for the CMK, the, uh, the uh, cloud managed keys for Microsoft Azure. Um, that's the next platform that's been requested. So we're looking at uh, doing that. The Microsoft toolkit for Linux is not as good as it would be. If it was Amazon, so they're, they're still pretty Windows-centric, but there is some things that we can look at doing. We're also adding fast instance migration. One of the most common uh, and tedious tasks in Gemstone is, well, I have to add an instance to this class, and there's 50 million instances to go through. Um, it's doable, but it can take a while. Um, it's a bit laborious, so we're, we're trying to optimize that use case because it's very common among our customers to do a bulk migration um, down at the C level so we can do it a lot faster and do uh, either incremental commits or just one big commit at the end when it's done. So faster and, and hopefully still online in production too, though that gets a little tricky. In 3.7, we added a new class called GS SSH socket for SSH support. So you can SSH uh, a command to a different server using this class like you would SSH on the command line. Also, we added uh, GS SFTP socket and GS SFTP remote file. So this will allow you to fetch and uh, get and put files using SFTP to uh, remote servers, up and download files. We've also optimized uh, some work in some of the read stream classes. Those uh, stream classes, especially read streams that are doing parsing, tend to be very message send heavy. And uh, that's kind of where you can hit the limitations of the Smalltalk VM, just uh, 
millions of message sends. So we've tried to optimize some of that in 3.7. Beyond 3.7, um, Dale is working on Rowan, which is a package manager designed to be run against any small talk. We're doing our own first. Um, it uses uh, tunnel files for the format and it's designed to uh, interface with Git. That uh, development work has been ongoing now for a few years. It's continued to uh, push forward. We're, uh, it's out there on GitHub. We're not ready to uh, productize it yet, but it's, uh, it's definitely making progress. Uh, we're working on supporting Faro better. Um, there's a project Martin is working on called Spark Girl, which he'll be talking about tomorrow, 9 a.m. right here. We take you through that, but uh, it's basically a gemstone interface uh, from Faro. We're also looking at OpenSSL version 3, which is a major change in SSL. Um, for us, we're dependent on some other packages that are dependent on SSL, like OpenLDAP, which are, has, does not yet support SSL 3. So we're kind of waiting on some of those other packages to move forward before we can move everything to SSL 3. SSL 1.1.1 is still supported for, I think, another year and a half, two years by SSL. So we've still got some time yet. Um, we've released a couple new open source projects on GitHub. Um, there's a gem connect for Postgres up there um, for connecting to Postgres, uh, RDB, similar to uh, gem connect for Oracle and Sybase, which we already had. Um, this is encoded entirely in Smalltalk using the FFI in order to make it more maintainable. And uh, we've just added gem connect for RabbitMQ. Um, which is designed to uh, talk to uh, RabbitMQ queues and post messages and read messages and, and do all those fun things. Also through the FFI, although we had to extend our FFI to handle things like that you can do in C that most people don't do, like passing structures by value and some things like that that the RabbitMQ guys decided they would use. So um, requires the latest version of Gemstone was just shipped to run this one, uh, just for the FFI changes. That's my last slide. Are there any questions? And I'm still early and we have time for coffee and treats. Thank you.